intermittent fasting is growing in popularity. And alongside weight loss, there are claims that it can improve your health. But is it true? One could almost argue that it's not the fasting that's causing the benefits here. To find out, I'm taking a group of everyday Australians through a fasting experiment to see what it does to their bodies. Yeah, I'm at the point where I'm, I'm definitely ready to make a change. Um, I'm not, my self-confidence is low. The extra weight makes you tired and no energy. It's not just the weight, it's just not eating well. No calorie counting, no medications, just nutritious food less often. I'm really interested in the science behind it. I guess excited as well to see if I can stick to it. We'll track them along the way, revealing both the good and the bad. I've had terrible headaches. And in just six weeks, we will reveal some surprising results. I've really tried, I've put everything into it. And so um, I just, I want to have done well for myself. So let me introduce you to Vanessa. So this is our corporate worker, mum of four, very busy. She's Italian. Oh, she has an Italian husband. Yes, yeah, so they eat a lot of Italian food. <laughs> busy mum of four, Vanessa, needs some sugar to get through her day. Are you picking up the kids? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, I've got a them. meeting. We've got league this afternoon, so. But it's beginning to affect her energy levels. You do carry all that guilt and you want to be there as much as possible for the children. So you squeeze everything and that does impact your health. Good luck with your speech. <laughs> yeah, I'm at the point where I'm, I'm definitely ready to make a change. Um, I'm not, my self-confidence is low. The extra weight makes you tired and no energy. It's not just the weight, it's just not eating well. In the study? I would do it for them, you know, because I want energy and I want to be able to be, do more things with them. And people often say to me, oh, you're not, you're not very overweight, but 27 kilos on my frame, it's actually a lot. She's using a lot of those sweet treats and so on. I think as an energy pick me up, but also as an emotional crutch. What's your sort of view of her metabolic health? She does have a fasting insulin level of eight, so that's sort of high normal. We can also see that she's got um, elevated triglyceride levels, so that would all indicate that she does have a bit of excessive visceral mm -hmm. fat. And she probably also has high liver fat. Yeah, in this, in this metabolic contest, yeah. Luigi is concerned about the amount of fat in Vanessa's blood, her triglycerides. When your adipose tissue cannot manage any more calories it's as filled. it has reached you know the saturation then the extra calories that you are eating like carbs they have to go somewhere else they go to the liver and so the liver start to produce more triglycerides and that's called ectopic fat mm. and it's toxic for yeah it, for the liver for the heart for the beta cells and these are the cells in your pancreas that produce insulin. insulin yes and that's why then you know you develop diabetes mm. Too many of these triglyceride fats in the blood can lead to an increased risk of stroke and heart disease. The good news is my team of experts think fasting could help. The uh, dietary intervention, I think, is going to be the primary uh, factor here. I mean, logically, it does make sense, yeah. doesn't it? That if you reduce that opportunity to eat, you're going to reduce grazing. Yes. When you control the blood sugar, the triglycerides actually will come down yeah. as well. <laughs> So I've got to know them all a little bit now, um, some idea of what their challenges might be and what the best interventions might be for them. So I've come up with a fasting plan for each and it's time to deliver that plan and see what they think. Okay, you are going to do the 16-8. I've chosen that time frame so Vanessa will be asleep for much of it. And 16 hours without food won't feel so challenging. But fasting isn't just about going without, it's also about choosing nutritious food when you can eat. <laughs> so is this the sort of stuff you might nibble in at? I see the chalky bars, um, Vanessa. Yes. 
Unfortunately, yeah, this is my go-to um, box in the pantry. Um, as I said, I'm addicted to sugar and, and also crunch. One last little box. I know sugar's your thing, but you've also mentioned the crunch. I just want to point out foods like this. Mm. They're the savory foods. It seems like it's not that bad, but this is refined starch. Starch is just big, long chains of glucose. Mm. And when it's in that format where the fiber is gone, normally when you eat whole grains, your body has to work out the fiber. It's got to pull out the carbohydrate from the plant cell walls and, and get it up into your bloodstream. So usually it's a, it's a slower process. In fact, that's a really good experiment to do. Take a little bit of that, of a rice cracker or one of those breadsticks, put it in your mouth and don't even chew. And you'll find it starts to dissolve in your mouth. Whereas if I gave you a piece of whole grain sourdough bread, it would still be there three hours later. <laughs> You've got to chew that thing to break it down. Yeah. And then once that refined starch hits your small intestine, it's absorbed really, really quickly and it will push up your blood sugars really quickly. I've done all the week's ironing. So I've done 30 shirts and four uniform dresses. And now I think I'm gonna go to bed because I can't stop thinking about food. And I don't wanna break this on day one. Tonight I've made... These first few days of the fast have been challenging for everyone. But none more so than Vanessa, who has contacted me for some help. So um, Sunday was a tough day for me. I sort of, um, I didn't eat well. I didn't set myself up, I think, to succeed. And I sort of, I, I panicked. I sort of thought, oh, I got anxious and I ate and I ate, gorged on sugar, lollies. In the lead up to fasting. Tonight's really tough. Vanessa lost control of her eating. She's also been experiencing nausea and headaches. I'm feeling a little tired tonight, a little flat, um, a little low in energy. Cut out everything. I didn't eat any sugar, no processed food, um, just protein and vegetables. But the headaches were particularly bad all day Monday night, all day Tuesday, and I even vomited on Tuesday night. Mm. Um, it got really bad and I, I just couldn't, um, I had to just lay down. Um, it felt like a migraine, like I couldn't even yeah. sleep. Do you know what, just listening to you there, what was occurring in my mind was that you've kind of gone from 16 or more hours a day eating to, to 16 hours fasting. Switched so you've literally flipped your exactly diet. Exactly what I thought. Yeah, you were doing the 8 I 16. I was doing the 8 16. <laughs> so it's a huge change. You know, it's a very different situation for your body and it kind of went <gasps> panic. Not coping. Science is showing that high sugar consumption can have very real effects on our mental health. Monday was the funeral. My dad's funeral it was a very tough day. Which has me worried because Vanessa is also dealing with some devastating news. Her father recently passed away. He died of cancer. He wasn't that old. So I feel like if I don't start doing something about my health, that could be me. I think that's driving me to be successful at this point. Um, yeah, it's been a tough week. I really think Vanessa should consider if now is the right time for such a big change. Hi, I'm here with Harry. It's uh, the day before Easter. He's brought me into a lolly shop. Oh no, you, you brought yourself, Mum. But we're not buying anything. Here goes. So far, I've resisted cheese on a stick, bacon on a stick, pretzel on a stick, waffle on a stick. Six weeks ago, our volunteers committed to a program of intermittent fasting. All needed to take urgent action to improve their health. Well, today I brought our volunteers all back together again, along with my brain's trust of medical experts. And I'm going to share the results. So we'll see what's changed, what hasn't changed. And ultimately, I want to see whether fasting has been good for them. One of the key aims of this experiment was to see if fasting could improve metabolic health. 
and the results are a little unexpected. There are some incredible success stories, like Vanessa. I've really tried, I've put everything into it, and so um, I just, I want to have done well for myself. Vanessa's life was literally a sugar rush, which was driving up the triglyceride fats in her blood and adding dangerous visceral fat around her vital organs. So Vanessa, nearly six kilograms of weight loss in six weeks. Yeah, must I'm be so, so pleased. Yeah, I'm so, so happy. So congratulations, that's a great effort. Thank you. The big change is that drop in triglycerides from 2.6 down to 1.5. So that's really good. And I think that shows you've probably improved some of the quality of your diet as well. That's the sugar. <laughs> the sugar one. Yeah. Fasting also seems to have had a positive impact on Vanessa's mood. I've just noticed a huge difference in the mood swings from when I used to eat that sugar. I'd feel good in the moment and then I'd feel terrible. I definitely do feel um, more on top of my emotions. I feel clearer in the head. I feel calmer. I guess that's overall the big difference. One could almost argue that it's not the fasting that's causing the benefits here. It's the diet quality improvement. And this is just a tool that allows you to do that in a more simple way than that everyday chronic calorie restriction. I'm gonna be so happy to tell the kids um, they've been through this with me. Um, they were so excited for me to get my results today. So yeah, I can't wait to tell them. A job well done. Cheers, Cheers. to long-term good health.